Sup gamers, Randy Potato here to rank all the skills on the runaway. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to subscribe and check out my Patreon in the description for early access to my upcoming videos. Searing Strike is her base single target melee attack, usable from one or two against one or two. It does base three to six damage, four to seven on upgrade, while applying two burn, three on upgrade, and doubling the burn on combo. This can scale pretty well, but between her path system and the fact that she's somewhat fragile, you don't really like being in the front, which hurts the skill a bit. Arsonist lowers your base damage, which is the main thing the skill has going for it above Firefly. And on Orphan, while the damage is okay, you obviously lose the burn almost entirely. Combo is useful for a number of applications, so despite the effect being quite powerful, looking at the skill in its entirety, it's hard to put it any higher than the solid tier. Certainly an auto-equip for most front row runaways, but not her brightest moment. Firefly is her ranged base attack, usable from the back two against the back three, doing two to four damage, three to four on upgrade, and three burn, a whopping five on upgrade, and on combo will apply three burn to a random adjacent target. This is a solid burn, and it's where you want her positionally, and has quite good reach. The biggest benefit, however, is general runaway stuff. This is the best scaling dot in the game, benefiting, of course, from Orphan, but also having the widest selection of scaling dot trinkets available in the sprawl. This is the safest and most consistent skill on the safest and most consistent runaway build and easily slots in the universally useful tier. Smokescreen is a debuff usable from any rank to the front three ranks, applying a combo token and a blind. It has one of the best upgrades in the game, giving a combo, two blind tokens, and a Vuln as well, all on a one turn cooldown. Obviously best with a Leper, the Blind and Combo are useful in basically any comp. Without the Mastery, it's just an emergency button press most of the time if you have nothing better to do, but with the skill mastered, it becomes arguably the strongest debuff in the game. Every build, including her worthless meme path survivor, equips this move in basically every scenario, which fits it easily in the universally useful tier, right behind Firefly. Run and Hide is a self buff usable from any rank, you move back one, gain two stealth tokens, and when mastered, you also gain three regen. The skill has a two turn cooldown. This is yet another skill that is heavily dependent on a mastery upgrade to be usable. There are almost no scenarios where you would ever equip this unmastered. It's obscenely slow and basically just an emergency sustain move. The upgrade, however, is strong enough that this easily moves into the solid tier right behind Searing Strike. Regen and sustain with the stealth are key in staving off death in the more challenging fights. Of course, oftentimes you still don't have the opportunity to spend a turn doing this rather than something more aggressive. Still, this is almost always a late game upgrade and equip, so I can't call it terrible. Hearthlight is a full party AOE usable from any rank. It both ignores and removes all stealth. On upgrade, it also clears all party blind. It has a one turn cooldown. This is a quite nifty move, with its actual effects being pretty marginal, as stealth does not generate much of a threat in most runs, and the blind removal being inconsistent with the cooldown and random turn order. However, getting the opportunity to strip dodge tokens from the full enemy party comes in handy in a whole number of fights, from cultists to creature dens. The party blind removal is also quite strong in certain fights like in the Shroud or the Act 2 boss, and of course again the cultists and creature dens. And of course, the AoE in general can proc certain trinkets with dot effects. I usually toss it on my bar just to have it. It's rarely used and rarely upgraded, but occasionally a useful tool for the chest. I put it in the solid right above run and hide. Ransack is a melee single target attack usable from any rank to the front three ranks, doing three to six damage, four to eight on upgrade. It both moves the runaway forward and moves the enemy forward, pulling two ranks on upgrade. On combo, it will apply a three-point burn to a random adjacent enemy. This is obviously a stable for movement builds and movement teams and survivor path runaway, though those are all suboptimal for this class. It does okay, but not great damage, and the pull isn't exciting as other movement abilities in this game, though it does more damage than most. It's really only equipped in niche scenarios outside of the optimal runaway setups, but certainly isn't a bad move. 
I'd say it has more utility than Swing Strike, fitting in the solid tier right in front of that. Cauterize is a heal usable from the back three ranks to any ally. It's only usable with an active bleed on the target and will remove the bleed and heal 25%, 33% on upgrade. It has a use limit of three. While the restriction seems pretty limiting on first glance and becoming entirely unusable in a large number of scenarios, bleed remains the most common dot effect and even numerous allies can cause bleed on your team, notably the occultist heal and the intermezzo jester, making this more consistent if you build around it. I still never trust this as my primary heal, but it's absolutely essential in those tougher bleed bouts, like cults encounters or anything in the shroud. I can't put it in the OP tier because of the restrictions of course, but it's lost easily in the universally useful tier, right behind Firefly. Controlled Burn is usable from the front three ranks to any rank, and is unique in that it applies a debuff on a specific rank, rather than a targeted enemy. The skill applies an initial 3 point burn, 4 on upgrade, to the enemy in the target rank, and then for the next 3 rounds whenever an enemy in that rank starts their turn, it will undergo a burn check, where if successful it will apply a 2 point, 3 on upgrade, burn to that enemy. It ignores stealth and has a 3 turn cooldown. Also notable is that the debuff will still apply to the rank even if you miss the initial burn attack. The skill has quite high potential to scale but it's very slow, and the fact that each individual burn check can be resisted makes it not all that consistent compared to more standard strats involving spamming Firefly or other direct burn attacks on the target with your generally boosted application chance and or boosted dot numbers. Also the fact that you cannot use this from rank 4 makes it even more limiting in the type of builds you can use with this skill. I can't call it trash by any stretch, but I'm pretty comfortable slotting it at the very back of the solid tier. Dragonfly is a front row AoE usable from the front two ranks. It will apply a two point burn, a whopping four points on upgrade, as well as one to two damage, one to three on upgrade, while moving runaway back one. It also has a chance of applying combo, 25%, 33% on upgrade. While front row and movement runaway is not my favorite build, I can't deny the power of this burn here, especially when you factor in an upgrade. Certainly the easiest way of applying burn from the front ranks, and can easily melt trash mobs better than most runaway builds, though still worse than most other heroes. With some additional scaling trinkets this can become a real powerhouse, though again being AoE it's far more prominent against trash mobs than most bosses which are usually it's a single target. The combo is useful but of course only being a chance is not something to count on, just an occasional bonus. Still, in most cases it's the best you're getting out of your front row runaway so I slotted at the top of the solid tier. Firestarter is an any rank to any rank buff. The hero receiving the buff will then apply two burn, three on upgrade, on every hit, which includes not only attacks, but combat items and non-damaging attacks like Bellow. It has a two turn cooldown, and with Orphan Path this also gives Runaway a crit token. It's pretty slow, but can be an absurd powerhouse with the right setup. AoE combat items, AoE skills, and of course repose tanking with man at arms are all solid ways to utilize this. It's a bit slow and requires a bit too much setup for my tastes, so you only ever really use this on orphan path to generate crit tokens. This is of course the only realistic path to making backdraft viable as well, but this does not make this more than a pretty niche meme. Not bad, but I'd still slot it behind ransack. And finally we have backdraft. One of the most interesting Darkest Dungeon 2 memes that is completely unplayable in most comps, but with a very specific setup has arguably the highest upside of any Darkest Dungeon 2 attack. This skill is usable only from the front two against the back three ranks. This skill requires that your target have a monster in front of them with burn dots applied, and will use those burn dots to calculate damage. It will take 50% of the total burn application, so if you have a two point burn for three rounds, that would be six total burn, so 3 for backdraft, 75% on upgrade, and apply that as direct damage. Unlike cause of death however, the skill also is affected by damage modifiers, strength and weak tokens, and crit and vuln tokens. It has a 1 turn cooldown and also ignores guard. With runaway being the only consistent high burn application hero, in most standard builds this never actually does anything. However in a very specific build where you utilize orphan path, for damage and firestarter crit, and apply a firestarter to your plague doctor, who can then open with rain, 
you unlock an absolutely powerhouse skill with essentially limitless scaling, including easily one-tapping the locks and even the back lung in the Act 2 boss fight. Again, as I said before, this is very, very niche and something that has to be a conscious effort to build, but has much higher potential than other meme and mid-tier damage builds. I still can't place it higher than solid tier and probably right behind Firestarter because it's so incredibly niche, but it's at least worth trying a couple of runs out and seeing some juicy numbers. Overall, the Runaway is a low to mid-tier hero with a ton of low and mid-tier moves. There are a couple here and there with standout potential, but she mostly just stumbles along as an above average dot dealer with some scaling and some respectable, if not flashy utility skills. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe and join my Patreon or become a YouTube member for early access to my upcoming videos.